yeah, a lot of this, a lot of his stuff is just I'm having fun doing it rather than he's actually trying to accomplish anything. He's 100 percent in the game. Some people go to Hot Topic to buy edgy clothes. <laughs> uh, Fabi Spile goes to Hot Topic to turn the people in Hot Topic into clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Versus. I am your host Hal, also known as the Amber King slash Pancreas Does Work, and I'm here with my co-host right. Colin. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, Ooh, we're, not, we're not even, we're neither of the debaters and no. you're already throwing shade, all right. No, it, it makes sense because I'm here with my co-host Colin, who is Pancreas No Work, great channel. Obviously everyone knows that already. Uh, his, his stuff is really good. And Today will be a, another Versus episode where we will take on the Gene Fathers, the uh, best geneticists within the setting. We have Andy in the uh, blue corner over here. Andy hello. Will be, hello, everyone, to Andy. He'll be representing Mr. Belisarius Call, the... Eddie Beetle! <laughs> Eddie Beetle time. The guy literally the size of a Primark. He's Chunk. Um, <laughs> <There you laughs> a few go. more arms. And in the red corner, we have Eli with Fabius Bile. Yeah. Eli's read his books and uh, he loves it. And he's going to show that love today. Uh, first off, we'll just ask the contestants how they're feeling. Andy, how confident are you feeling today? The Omnissiah is with me, as he is with everyone. I'll be fine. Ooh, oh, he's just quite he's, confident. Yeah, quite confident. Uh, Eli, how are you feeling about Fabius Bile today? Dude, he's the main character of Warhammer at 40,000, so I mean, come on. I, huh? <laughs> he does have main character syndrome, to be fair. He does think he's the main character. Uh, but with that being said, I think, boys, we're going to hop off straight uh, on into it. Eli will be up first, telling us about the Clone Lord. Eli, are you ready? Yes, sir. And your time begins now. Nice. Fabius Bile is the best and greatest and most epic scientist in the entire galaxy. He's the Man Flayer, the Clone Lord, the Primogenitor, and Chief Apothecary of the Emperor's Children, and basically all of Chaos at this point. He's worshipped as a god by his children that he has created, which have become entire civilizations and societies that are self-sustainable and govern themselves. He has created the New Men, which are basically his own version of Space Marines. He improves upon the Emperor's work, which is apparently not a heresy according to Belisarius' call, so I can uh. say that. Uh, and while they may be not quite as heroic and strong as the Space Marines, uh, they are fast and cunning and most importantly human. They retained their humanity and they can reproduce, so there's a lot more of them. You can make a lot more of them for a lot cheaper. They cost you basically nothing. And they're pretty, they're pretty badass, as one may say. They're pretty cool. He single-handedly saved the entire Emperor's Children Legion from destruction, give, taking on many great sacrifices and burdens upon himself. Uh, I don't know, that was pretty cool. Chaos unifies around him when he doesn't even try. He doesn't want them to half the time, and they still flock to him because he's just so epic. He gives us so much chat energy that the Emperor's Children just kind of conglomerate around him and follow him because he's a natural born leader he enhanced the entire legion of the emperor's children back in the day and basically single-handedly caused their entire fall what an epic troll he turned civilians into drugs literally awesome rock and roll dude <laughs> oh. he made the perfect cloned primark of fulgrim and basically the perfect horse but horse didn't have a soul so it didn't work quite as well but fulgrim does have a soul so he'd made the perfect Fulgrim. I don't see Belisarius creating any Primarchs. He's a heresy. It's heresy. Oh, but creating Space Marines is heresy. He's immortal. He'll never die. He's defeated death. There's literally like 20 of him. Only one Belisarius. There's a billion uh, Fabius Biles. He's seen the face of Slanesh. Still doesn't believe her. Freaking got him. Uh, yeah, I think that's good. Oh, and he's dipping yeah. out straight away. Like, less, once less again, less rocking the, the confidence. He's got a good portfolio. He does have quite the portfolio. I feel like he gave his uh, like his rap battle intro there. He's let everyone know <laughs> that um, I'm going like, to match. He's, he's very much, if uh, Fabius needs a hype man, Eli's already there. 
<laughs> Eli, if Fabius has one fan, Eli's that fan. <laughs> he's already worshipping Slanesh, he's halfway there. He's already in there. I do like how, like, the way he was doing the intro, you could just imagine him in, like, wrestling gear about to approach the ring. Just like, <laughs> Spell us, us uh, Bile, Fabius, yeah. <laughs> The big primogenitor. It's some, uh, it's some good points, but I think it's time for a, another beginning and opening Let's for go. Andy to unleash Let's his go. knowledge. Andy, are you ready? Yeah. And your time begins now. Okay, it's time to talk about Mr. Magos, Daddy Beetle, Big Mechanicus, Mac Daddy himself, Belisarius Cool. This guy is an old dude. He was around during the days of Fabius Bile during the Horus Heresy. It's kind of debatable. I don't know exactly who's longer like lived. But then again, Fabius Bile has died several times and been cloned and brought back because, you know, oh, you can't just have one life. That's cringe, hipster. Anyway... He was around during the days of the Horus Heresy, doing his bit for the Imperium, and during those days he realised, you know what, I quite like flesh, so I'm not going to be too techy, techy just yet. I'm just going to, like, upgrade my brain a little bit, add some MacGuff MacGuffins, make myself a bit more intelligent. That's pretty cool. But with a bit of time and a bit of encouragement, he realised, nah, flesh is weak, fam. I'm going to get some iron in me. I'm going to be, like, this gigantic, like, I'm going to re replace my limbs, my organs, my I'm going to add extra appendages so I can do, like basketball while I'm using a calculator or whatever he does. I don't know. He's too smart for me to know. But anyway, he started to in integrate people's minds into his own. So like, Fabius is a pretty smart dude. Okay, that's one brain. Guess what? Belisarius has got like dozens of people's consciousness and brains integrated into his like being. He's like a hive mind. He can do so much with that processing power and those experiences of several people, one of which might be Arkham Land. It's not confirmed, but it's probably very much a reliable thing that if, if you were going to integrate someone into your brain, probably be the man who made the Land Raider, because, you know, they have a meme point there. And like like Eli said, you know, oh, it's cool, you know, you made some Primarchs, which uh, all of them failed uh, or died or are in prison. But big, 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 big daddy Belisarius, he's, he's made the Primarch Marines. He's got hundreds of thousands of children. He's got thousands of them all across the galaxy doing the Emperor's will, and they're better than firstborn such as Bile. Yes, they're mass produced, but they're also getting it done. What has Bile done with his like so-called children? Little like, well, like little little misfits who, who have bad grammar. Cool, whatever. Also, should, I think I'm gonna like do a bit of a heavy one here. He beat a Catan like in a battle of wits and he like bested like a primordial being that's arguably as strong as a chaos god just saying uh he also you know doesn't have the like equivalent of space marine grade cancer mixed with scurvy unlike bile and his whatever he's got going on with that infection he has uh he also you know he can do multiple tasks at once because eli mentioned oh there's you know Bile's cloned himself loads of times. Well, guess what? We've got the Call Inferiors, baby. Call is able to make versions of himself, lesser versions, to accomplish several tasks across the galaxy at once. He's got the skills to make the master-crafted Armor of Fate for Gilliman. He literally saved Space Jesus from dying. That's pretty cool. He can he commands the entirety of the mechanic. mechanic is like, Fabius Bile, he's got the Emperor's Children. Cool, a broken legion full of drug addicts that's cool he's got the mechanicus the entire mechanicus and he's got the fealty of night houses and titans he's also uncovered me many several mysteries across the galaxy and confronted the deadliest foes across the vast void of space he's even been at the side of the avenging sun he's witnessed the destruction of cadia he's even allied himself with trezin the infinite rather than made a little like oh hello i'm fabius oh you're trezin you're kind of cool cringe he worked with him to try and stem the tide of chaos there's only one Mac Daddy in the 40k universe. 10,000 years going strong, and that's Belisarius Cool. And I think I'm going to leave it at that for my opening statements. Ooh. Nicely done. Colin, like the, let you, like the how fall. do you feel? Uh, I feel like we got some uh, strong contenders on each side. Uh, I do like the uh, each of the arguments you have for, you know, I guess they're children, as you could say. Uh, <laughs> the Primaris Marines, I mean, first of all, they're the Space Marines. Uh, quite a uh, Quite prominent, obviously, in Warhammer 40k, and it's uh, definitely important to uh, acknowledge Call did that. It's kind of a mm. hard one to top, but that being said, Eli had a good point. Uh, Fabius' new man, they uh, you, you, they just need to have, you know, they just need to procreate. You don't need any facilities for that. Just when, when a mommy new man and a daddy new man love each other very <laughs> much, 
You get you get more soldiers, so Bro, it's uh, creation is cringe. Just a candlelit dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a candlelit dinner, yeah, and you've yeah. got another soldier eventually. That's right. uh, so I do like uh, they've each got some stuff going for them. I do have a question for each side if they'd uh, if they'd okay. care to hear it. Nice. Uh, the question is, uh, and I'll have uh, Eli go for answer first, and then Andy next. Yeah, uh, they both have some ability to uh, I feel like to stick around a bit. Uh, and avoid death. Uh, Call, of course, being a tech priest, and Fabius just cloning himself whenever anyone blinks. Uh, but I do have to ask, are either of them capable of a uh, true form of immortality? So let's say you kill all of the Fabiuses, and uh, you, you have an EMP next to Call or something. Do they have a way to get around this for either of them? Uh, Eli, what would, uh, what would happen if all of the Fabiuses died? Does he, does he have an out... All right. <laughs> Maybe he's too smart for that. He would have a backup plan for his backup plan for his backup plan. He right. literally always wins. You can't beat this guy. He all has right. an unknown location in the galaxy, unknown to all except for him, where his new men are going to go live one day when he needs to. And not a single soul knows about it. So, I mean, you know, that's a good hiding spot if he needs it. All right. And, uh... Andy, how would uh, how would call uh, what would happen to call? Is there anything he could do to reroute some data routines or something like that? I don't well, know how I'm, computers work. I'm sure he has the capability to create something similar to what the Necron use, where they move their consciousness into like a hub. We already know he's got the call in theories. We already know he's got usable like lesser versions of himself that basically act to the to the normal observer like Belisarius except more mechanical and this is this is tech daddy he's gonna have contingents like oh as long as I've got bandwidth or a hard drive or a floppy disk I'm not going anywhere I'll just make more memory and I'll spread myself around it's not a problem you can't beat the machine because the machine is immortal praise the Omnissiah mm, all praise right the so Omnissiah. Uh, I, I like that with Andy with a pretty solid answer, and uh, Eli, I'm not going to lie, you were definitely channeling some but-I-did-have-breakfast-today energy. Fabius uh, <laughs> never loses, bro. I don't know what uh, to tell that you. is fair, although you, you did you did acknowledge Fabius has about five gazillion contingency plans in place, so... You did that die is worth in the Inquisitor knowing. game as the final boss. <laughs> that <laughs> that oh is God. true. Uh, Alright, I think uh, I'm good on questions. Are you gentlemen ready for round two? Unless Al has anything yeah. to I do have a question, in. but I think I'll save it for my round. Uh, my All my right. review, shall we say. And All uh, right. Eli, are you ready for your next section? Yes. And your time begins now. Alright, I was actually trolling. Fabius is immortal because he take the Wraithbone technology of the Eldar, and now his consciousness resides within Wraithbone, which is why he can make one trillion of himself all the time. So he actually can never die. Uh, I totally forgot about him that till now. But anyways, that's pretty cool. He's literally immortal. Uh, his noise brains are also still around, which is cool. They recognize him from 10,000 years ago. One of his coolest creations by far. Who doesn't like noise brains? They're so freaking cool, dude. His war gear is epic. One touch from his demon staff is an auto win in most of his fights. Uh, and he makes serums that literally can affect demons, which have no real physical essence or organs, and it somehow still works. He's just that smart. The Chirurgeon is a sentient, uh, fleshy machine that's a complete bro and operates on him while he's asleep. It's a smart guy, he lays eggs. I mean, like, come on. I haven't seen Mr. Call create any demon flesh sacks oh. that create eggs and <laughs> and uh, perform surgeries. Fabius has gone to Kamara and he balled so hard on the Dark Elder that he outsmarted them and caused basically a mini civil war and they crawled over each other and destroyed literal entire planets to try to get to Fabius and he still beat them let's go he uses the webway that's cool on its own he has his own war band and it's basically all just a whole army and conglomerate of apothecaries because all the apothecaries from around the galaxy flock to this guy because he's so smart and he knows more than every single one of them there's not a single apothecary who can rival this guy's genius so that everybody goes to him to learn from him he cares about his children he's I, honestly a loving father he cares about the little kids you know he gives them little cuddles touches pinches their cheek he cares about his uh new men especially creates an entire society for them an entire backup plan the perfect paradise for them to keep them safe if he needs to they're not tools in his mind but they're the future they're the future of the entire world he's not just working for the future of chaos or the imperium he's working for the future of humanity to make his own humanity 
that will be a million billion times better than the Emperor's, that's for sure, because the Emperor's didn't work out, so now it's Fabius' turn. Yeah, he's, he balls pretty hard. I think that's about it. He's, um, he's cool. And we will cut it there. Not pretty, uh, pretty impassioned, I'd say. Definitely putting uh, Fabius on quite the high level to be comparing him to Big E himself. Yeah, bro, all the Heresy. entire chaos relies on Heresy. him. They can't even Heresy. survive without him. They use all of his he's created, yeah, you know. Well, chaos uh, only exists because of Fabius. <laughs> With that being said, though, Andy, are you ready for your rebuttal? Oh, I am so ready. Let's go. And your time begins now. Okay, so first of all, in a 1v1 versus Belisarius, let's talk about what, what Bile is rocking. He's got the Rod of Torment. Guess what? It makes pain really bad. Doesn't matter. Carl's, ma Carl's made of steel. It's not going to do anything. Paul is armed with the Arc Scourge. It exercises machine spirits. Bile's funny little backpack. Guess what? He's going to make it defunct just by going, snap of his fingers. That doesn't work anymore. Your armor doesn't work anymore. No more machine spirit. Done. He got the Solar Atomizer, a mastercrafted melter weapon capable of burning through tanks. How's your how's your little lab coat going to do against that? He's got a mastercrafted Omnicyan axe that towers over by him. And let's not forget, Paul is bigger than a Primarch. He is gigantic. In a 1v1, oh, you got you got an, you got an old man with, with a little needler and a rod, a little, little cane, against a gigantic beetle man with a power axe that's capable of cutting through anything. No, no contest. He's got the mechadendrite hive, snaky, loopy little like appendages that will grab you, engulf you, stab you, throttle you, viviset you, whatever he wants to do. He's got the scryer skulls, which basically analyze during battle what's going on. We might have already seen the bit from the Gothic or Armada 2 cinematic where he's talking to the guys and he's doing threat assessments while he talks. Any mistake Cole makes, any single one, whether he moves his stance or he has a bit too much weight distribution on one foot or he has a vulnerability in his armor, Cole goes, weakness, jab, done. He's got the reaction times because he's a machine. He's literally and figuratively a machine. He's also got a refractor field. It makes him cloaked in gravitic energy. So not only is Call going to have a bit of trouble identifying where Call is when he's trying to attack him, making him harder to hit, he also refracts strikes. His refractor field can stop point blank las cannons and plasma guns. What's your little cane going to do about that? And I just need to press upon this he is enormous he is chonk so you've got a multi-limbed heavily armed shielded titanic figure bigger than a primarch with ten thousands of years of experience with several people's experiences of battle because remember we don't know who he's been integrating into his mind he could have been getting generals he could have been getting starty soldiers and he could have been integrating that into his knowledge of battlefield tactics and how he like zyklos nida is cool uh, how are you going to stand against this imposing beetle, armed to the teeth, armed with knowledge and foresight, who knows every single one of your little tricks and goes, doesn't matter, mate, I know exactly how to counter this, and uh, I'm going to leave it there. Ooh, with not much time to yes. spare as well. Damn. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see, I see. So Eli started to talk about his uh, Mr. Biles' greatness, whereas Andy went straight for Yo, my dad is bigger than yours, so I can, <laughs> he can beat you up your dad. <laughs> hey man, that's how it works in 40k. The taller yeah. and bigger you are, the more authority you have, and Cole's pretty Let's big. The avatar. That's why the avatar of Kane is huh? clearly beaten up by his thing smaller than it. Alright, listen. <laughs> Alright, listen. Yeah, listen. <laughs> the Eldar aren't involved here. I thought me and Eli were in the versus match this episode. I, yeah, I had all <laughs> like, forgotten the memo. I think uh, he thought yeah. the schedule meant you two were judging. <laughs> well, I do have a slight question for both of you. I'll start with Eli. Um, what is something you think Fabius could make which Belisario's call could not? As in, what would you think he would be capable of that his rival wouldn't even come close to? Well, a Primarch, first of all, and uh, an entire species, probably. I don't think uh, Call's really made anything from scratch. I think he's kind of just, you know, taken what he has and made it better. Don't see a lot of original works coming out of Mr. Hold Bella's on, your experience. whole thing was, oh, he's made pri like, he's literally copying, copying the Emperor's homework. Yeah, but the, uh, the, uh, uh, his, his, his mutant populations, though, he's made from scratch. 
And his new men are barely freaking space goes, Let's put some horns on this one. Let's make this one have like a weird. Yeah, thing. the cutest. Like, that's that's, that's, that's cute not building from scratch. That's that's guys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah, they'll, they'll die in the millions. That I'll overwhelm Bel Belisarius Call with my one billion mutant children. You can't hit him because yeah. of his refractor field. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said, though, Andy, what's something you think Call could make that Fabius wouldn't be capable of? Well, this is the thing. I mean, just from the fact that he's interacted with a Catan shard uh, and he's experimented with the sofa device, I reckon he could make something like an interplanetary dimensional teleportation device or something which influenced travel. But the thing about Call is he knows where the line is and he goes, Primarchs, that's a bit far. He could do it, but he goes, you know what? That's not my place. I'm going to improve upon the prime with the Primaris Marines and Bolters and Tanks and Dreadnoughts because that serves the Omnissiah, but I'm not overstepping the bounds of becoming a filthy heretic. Like well, he only, like, he only cause he only, you know, commits a little bit of heresy. And then, you know, then calls everyone else heretics. Yeah. Just a smidge of heresy. Mm -hmm. I do have it's one Bible verse about this. <laughs> I have one last that sounds question, like a spreadable though. how. Just just a smidge of just a smidge of heresy in the morning. It's delicious. <laughs> I do have one last uh, question, which I think Andy kind of touched upon in his section, which is, I'll start with Eli first. Uh, Fabius Bile has to kill Belisarius Call. How does he do it? <laughs> one trillion, billion, million mutants. And a whole space marine, uh, chaos space marine. you say marines. he can't do it Probably on get... his own? Oh, that's a shame. No, 1v1? Uh, no, he's too smart to fight a 1v1. Heck no. <laughs> And, uh, you know, 50,000 50, Apothecaries, uh, 100,000 Chaos Space Marines. Uh, you know, Abaddon the Despoiler probably owes him something, so there you go. That's fair enough. And Andy, uh, I think you <laughs> kind of touched on it earlier, but how would, you know, Call has to kill uh, Fabius Bile. How does he do it? All right, so by, by Eli's logic, okay. One, he's got a favor with uh, the Avenging Sun. He's like, can I get all of your Ultramarines and the Asatis? Cool. Also, he's got the Mechanicus. Cool. Also, he's got the Legios with the Knights and the Titans. Cool. Plus, he's got his own Space Marine factions like the Sons of Medusa and the ones that are uh, from Red the Vipers. Salamander to come. Red Vipers. Uh, the Black, Black Vipers. Yeah, like, he's got all these connections. And that's when he's going, I need to pull out all the stocks. Remember, he's also got his Call Inferiors, which could be making him... 70 opponents versus one in the case of call like because the thing is uh fabius can't use more than one body at a time more or less they're all independent uh forces Call is like a hive mind he go i have all my call inferiors i have my mechanicus my night houses the space marines my primark friends my my, my pal celestine we've we we're still on whatsapp we're still good get the sisters of battle involved get the black templars involved Get the get it get if rain and her oh, folks. Bro, they, I think, they, the, I think the Imperium's a little be, busy right you now. You would be in so much. Well, again, you were saying he's got a million billion. It's like if pressed, Call could be like, let's make a concerted effort to just obliterate oh, Fabius. It I would think not be, a little bit. It would not be. Is he losing time. to the Tyranids on that fifty-three percent scale? <laughs> well, they're also checking out certain post designs. <laughs> so you know, the Mechanicus has its priorities in the right place, if you ask mm. me. Well, I think there's some good arguments from both sides there. I like that uh, quite a lot. The hive mind idea actually hadn't crossed my mind before, so... I hear it, hear all that processing all power. I mean, what if we're talking about heresy, these, these these two are both pretty, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say it's, it's a bonus and a negative on both sides. I want, an, I, want an, I want a written apology about <laughs> the bad things you said about my dad. He's coming to get you. Well, other than bringing our actual dads to fight in this, <laughs> <laughs> this uh, YouTube episode, um, we'll start on our very last round. Uh, Eli, are you ready? Yes. You have one minute, and it begins now. All right, Mr. Call has cost the average Space Marine player hundreds of dollars. He has irreparably <laughs> changed the Space Marine aesthetic in Warhammer forever. Primaris art is hyper cringe compared to the classic Space Marines. He can't even fit his dudes in the regular transports, and he can't fit the regular dudes in the Primaris transports, so you have to buy all of them. <sighs> Primaris Marines fight for Mars instead of the Emperor. They don't know two poos about fighting chaos on the new foes and adapting. Other legions literally kill them. Uh, whatever. Call also is big, big heretic, committed mega heresy, improved the Emperor's work, and it took him like 10,000 years forever. Uh, bro, clones? AI clones? Colluding with Xenos? 
I don't know, man. I don't know. I, this, and this guy says he's a, he's not a heretic. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. He's been piggybacking off the real G, the Emperor, this whole time, but he's in his work. And most of all, he has no pimp cane. Call gets zero. Not your time is zero up. Zero bitches. <laughs> zero bitches. <laughs> Call is apparently maidenless. Uh, <laughs> Andy, are you ready for your response? Oh, I'm ready. Let's you go. have one minute, and it begins now. On that last point, uh, Call does have a uh, pimp cane. It's in Battlefleet Gothic 2 cinematic. You can see it when he gets off the ship. So let's just brush the cane moment aside. <laughs> let's be honest. Fabius is a very impressive individual, but he ain't no Belisarius. Yes, you've got your little freak army. Yes, you tried to clone a Primarch a few times and it didn't really work out. It works. But let's, but let's be honest, Belisarius has changed the game like you mentioned he has redefined what it is to be a space marine or a tabletop player or a xenos or a heretic because guess what when you write the book you get to say who's a heretic and who isn't and belisarius is not a heretic he is a genius he is the arch magos he is big brain daddy he is beetle incarnate and no matter how much cope i hear i never hear a response to how can he beat him in a one-on-one -on -one? he can't how can he beat him in intelligence he can't how can he combat his vast armies he can't abius is outclassed in every way and it's over long reign the omnissiah well 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 <laughs> colin how do you feel <laughs> about those uh the minute of hate uh, there was definitely some vitriol uh, going around. Uh, <laughs> I'd like the repeated naming of Call as the Beetle. That makes me chuckle. Us <laughs> Beetle. Uh, I do have uh, one final question for the contestants. Uh, if I were to, uh, say, drop a piece of a Warhammer miniature, and as it does with every small little thing you drop into your floor, vanishes directly into the warp forever, never to be found... Who could help me get something to find it? Which uh, who would build a better device to help me find it? Eli. Oh, there you go. Uh, Fabius already has webway technology and knows how Eldar technology works, so I think Ooh. you have a pretty good bet there. Ooh, and I uh, it is mostly Eldar stuff that I drop on my floor and lose for mm -hmm, all eternity. Mm -hmm. uh, Andy, how how uh, how might Call solve this dilemma? <laughs> well, you might you mentioned like for example, we you know how I mentioned he can analyze during battle like gotta remember he's got the entire mechanicus and all their scanning equipment and all their vehicles and their fleets mm -hmm. and all their ancient archaeotech and all their wondrous dark age of technology they, they probably have something in the back room that they're just like a bit like oh this is precious but if you were in a bind they'd be like yeah no problem and he's got his contacts throughout the imperium unlike fabius who's a bit of an independent oh uh, warbands are cringe i'm gonna work on my own like <laughs> belisarius is like i know some eldar who could help me out in the webway i've got my my living saints my primarchs my my entire army my night houses we'll figure it out it's no problem i got scanning devices i've got robots we're immune to an extent with the warp and its currents we know we got the know-how we can get it done mm, those are uh, good arguments on both sides or i have uh, one question i think both of them can answer i'll keep it together or not but um which one of them do you think understands perhaps the best geneticist in the entire universe the emperor who understands his work the best? Eli? Mm. That's a good question. Well, ironically, I think it is probably... I actually think it is Fabius. Controversial opinion. Andy? Do you feel the same well, way? No. Think of it this way. Belisarius has been in direct contact with the Emperor. He's been studying... Not just like, I have a box of scraps in a cave, Iron Man style, making weird movies. <laughs> no, Belisarius has like all the information. He has all the samples. He has countless test subjects. He has 10,000 years of knowledge. He's got the data vaults of the Mechanicus. He, got, he has the files and the archives on Holy Terror. He's been in the presence of Primarchs. He knows everything he needs to know. That's how he made a gigantic army of Primaris Marines. He knows it back to front, front to back, and if he wanted to make a Primarch, if it wasn't heresy, he could do it. I want to see a clip of Belisarius saying, Fabius Bile, Bile built this in a cave with a box of scraps! <laughs> 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 well, uh, Colin, uh, let us know your thoughts. What are you thinking so far? Who's uh, coming out on top? What's your overall review of the argument so far? Uh, both presented good sides. Uh, of course, there's the fact uh, Eli has mentioned Fabius is definitely uh, does not have the same resource standpoint that Call has and is able to has done quite a bit with as much reduced capacity. 
But that being said, in a in a war scenario, uh, just you you don't get to go. He has better stuff than me to avoid losing. Uh, you Especially just Especially when you've done the heresy that got you in that place in the first. Like if you if you didn't rebel, you could have had access to. But oh no, you did it. You did it a whoopsie with being yeah, a traitor. Yeah, so it uh, it is very impressive. Fabius has dud with the the limited resources he has, but uh, just going. Uh, well, you know, Fabius can't do what Call does because he has less resources, you know, like, or, or pardon me, let me reword that, uh, saying, imagine what Fabius could do if he had Call's resources, uh, I don't find too much of a defense because he, he doesn't have Call's resources, mm. uh, that is, a uh, hypothetical. That being said, uh, when I play strategy games, I'm a big fan of the all reliable, uh, minimal input for maximum output. And Fabius's new man, uh, definitely the kind of thing I would gel with. Uh, you don't need massive production facilities and other pre-existing knowledge like you do with Primaris Marines. He's made his new man, and then they're out and about to uh, to do their thing. So Fab uh, I think both of them definitely have brought up good points. Uh, Hal, how are you feeling over it right now? It's a toughie, this one. This might be, like, the closest we've ever had in terms of... <laughs> and to be fair, yeah. it's the first time we've pitted Warhammer versus Warhammer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this one feels, like, incredibly close because they're both, you know, like, they're kind of the same thing and yet they are not in terms of how the they show... two sides of the same coin. Yeah, they, how they show their genius. I do think Fabius has... Uh, isn't necessarily held back by what some would call morality, <laughs> as much as <laughs> Paul isn't a little bit. I feel like Fabius's experiments and all of his work is very much the... It's not really with a goal, as much of a goal in mind. It's also, it, it's, it speaks more to, like, can he do it? And does he have a end goal in mind? Whereas... Uh, co yeah, sorry, it, sorry? It, it's for the sake of doing it, almost. Yeah, whereas Cole isn't it's not that he's incapable of doing many of the things that fabius has he just has no interest slash directive to produce that he produced the primary space marines because that's what object oh, first of all because the law writers made him and secondly because that's essentially what he needed to do to help reconquer the galaxy in the indomitus is, crusade is your critique that Belisarius is too busy to do other things, therefore that's like that's not his. No, not, not that he's too, it's not not he's too busy. It's just like he's he got a lot to he do. Isn't, he's not out there making humans into cocaine powder because he although, has no interest. <laughs> although saying that, that is admittedly another criticism against Call. Uh, you can say you know he has a lot to do, so he can't focus on these things. That is a problem Call has. Uh, Call definitely has a lot more on his plate, oh, it, whereas oh, Fabius is a lot brilliant. more. Uh, if Fabius had that constraint, he wouldn't get nearly enough done, and I don't think it would be comparable if that were the case. I'm just saying. Yeah, well, yeah, but that goes back to what I was just saying earlier. Just because you know, it's like the opposite of the resource thing. Like, yeah, if Call didn't have all this stuff on his plate, he could do this. Well, Call does have all this stuff on his plate, mm. so unfortunately, it's a moot point. Well, I guess on the other side of that coin is. Fabius has nothing occupying his time, so therefore he essentially makes people into powder, which is like, for no reason. <laughs> it's a terrible work. There's happened. actually no reason to do it. Other I, than... need, I need you. To, you should be drugs now. Yeah, like, again, it's technically it's a waste of time. Um, for research purposes. I need a new jacket. You'll do. <laughs> he's just taking off the. He's just taking off the achievements, bro. Yeah, a lot of this. A lot of this stuff is just. I'm having fun doing it rather than he's actually trying to accomplish anything. He's 100% in the game. Some people go to Hot Topic to buy edgy clothes. <laughs> uh, Fabi Spile goes to Hot Topic to turn the people in Hot Topic into clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's also, I do have to remember as well, like, again, Belisario's call has essentially been immortal the entire time. He's lived 10,000 mm -hmm. years. And Fabius Bile, I think it's even said in the Fabius Bile books when he talks to Trezin. Or Trazen, sorry, he goes. Uh, I think Trazen says to him, "Are you even the original Fabius, or are you just a memory of the original Fabius?" So is Fabius Bile actually dead? So, and again, his the ghost uh, of a memory of a person. Yeah, and does his um, what's the is it the blight? Again, the blight keeps coming up, yeah. so it will kill him every time. Oh, he's cured by right now with the Wraithbone. His his OG form is he's coping. Is safe. I thought the Wraithbone. He his he basically had his memories. His memories won't go, but his bodies always die. 
if I remember. Yeah, but he's so, alive in the Wraithbone. I mean, to be fair, yeah, that's how Wraithbone stuff works. You keep your soul. It is your soul in that thing. Like, it's not like the Necrons where it's like, hey, you know, you remember, but are you mm -hmm. technically the same? Like, no, Wraithbone, it's, you're, it's straight up your soul in that thing. I guess doesn't, does a uh, call even need to do that, though? He doesn't, his body's not dying. That is another good point. Oh, it's a tough, this is a really tough one, because I like both these characters. Uh... uh I have, however, come to a decision, biased as it is, Hal, if uh, do you need a it. bit more time to discuss, think on yourself. I think I'm, I'm going to know it as soon as I say it out loud, so you go first. All right. Uh, as much as uh, both sides are very good, I have to say, and again, I will admit, some of this is biased going in, uh, but I'm going to give it to uh, Andy. Uh, hey. I feel like Carl just simply has a far stronger position, and if he were to feel he needed to do the things Fabius does, I feel like he would. Um, just it's a, uh, and while yes, his five billion other things on his plate would perhaps put some time in front of it, uh, Call, I feel like, could do what, again, he could do very much what Fabius does. Perhaps not as good, but uh, good enough. And in war, good enough is all you need. Also, uh, praise the Omnissiah. Love, Praise love the Omni Tech Priest. Love me machines. Love eight, me, eight, love me eight, machines. Eight flesh, just is. Uh, Hal, how about yourself? Where's your decision? It is essentially 50 50 here in my brain, but if I had to bring it down to one, I think they're basically matched on pretty much everything. So I'm going to say. Uh. I think I have to give it to Fabius, just for the simple fact that I think. He's probably on paper the slightly better geneticist in terms of Call would have to have resources and things to get to that point. Fabius has done the hard work and he's not held back by essentially red tape. I think other than I think they're matched on pretty much everything else. I think Fabius just beats him on. I think Fabius is the slightly the better genius. Uh, so I have to give it to Fabius. It's I, really uh, tough, I, that one. That I was should, really I hard. I should also say, going off the arguments, uh, Eli, one of the things that definitely pushed me towards Andy is when <laughs> you brought up Fabius and his dark Eldar escapades and using Eldar <laughs> technology. I find it very uh... difficult to support <laughs> GW going, hey, look at the Space Marine character using Eldar stuff again better uh... than they do. Thank you, GW. Thank you. Um, I, I, know, know. I just, I just like how 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 basically when like I'm just gonna hand wash atrocities by saying yeah, but it makes him better, so it's fine. <laughs> and he's, he's not a better human, but it, no, not at all. I mean, they're both not good people, but they also yeah. If we're going off morality, at a certain point, it's like yeah, Fabius is worth, but it's like they're both pretty horrid. I'm pretty sure like the whole Primaris Marine thing is they take children and they turn them into super all, soldiers. All so. is, <laughs> his call doesn't general. have a weapon that just its entire intent is to make pain. Just that's the priority. He's like, no, he I need to does. kill you to get out the way. He probably and does have Foreman a machine. Is just like, like oh, I'm just going to inflict the most pain feasible because it's funny. It's like, nah, it does. No, nah, it's just a bit, <laughs> a bit much, really. <laughs> I mean, I almost, I tell you, I'm, it's very close to this one. Like, I, I could have said either, to be honest. I just think uh, call definitely out bit and outplays Bile on a lot of things, but I think Bile just, there's a little bit of more genius to him. Uh, well, it'll just it'll be touch. interesting to see their, their banter in the, the upcoming book, which was the, the, the impetus for this episode, really. It was like, yes. oh, a new book coming out. Although, uh, I should uh, I should say that I think neither of these two are the best geneticist scientists whatever in the oh, yeah. galaxy. Oh, They're neither go. of them are even... The Emperor. Oh, please. Clown, clown, Biggie. <laughs> the old ones. The, re the real book should be oh, the old ones, probably, but they're not around anymore. The oh, the I'm real sorry. battle should be Ceres, uh, Cesaras versus uh, Yuri and Rakarth. Now there's there's some. Mm -hmm. All right, well you're a. Mm. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> the Necron, the Necron guy versus the Dark Eldar guy. Yep, That's no. that, there's some oh, real genetic stuff. Necrons are so epic. The human humans. But I would have heard of him. Oh well. Match. Love me, real empire. The children of the old ones versus the children of the Catan. Like, I, I... Mm. Well, uh, with that being said, though, uh, we hope everyone listening uh, appreciated and enjoyed the content. We, again, this was a tough one. You have to let us know down below uh, if you think we, you Indeed. know, which one you think won, maybe, or who had, you know. Maybe an especially argument we miss because we, like, no offense, we always miss an argument. <laughs> don't, like, please don't be angry <laughs> and, at us. And especially because. 
The judges are tied. All right, well, now I'm really going with Carl. <laughs> the judges are tied, but the co the commenters, you gotta you gotta carry it through. Yes, and if you're in the uh, side chat, please to uh, do please vote on the poll. Let us know which one you're you're uh, thinking is the, the superior. I guess we haven't. There's no there's no proper template of like oh what we're judging on. It's just I think in our minds we know who's the best. Um, and with that being said, though, thank you so much for listening and watching. And we hope to see you all on the next episode. Peace. Love you very much. Bye, everyone. Praise the Omnis. I'd marry you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>